teach you about how to turn through different plane configurations is as we as we open up and we get to here, we're going to look towards the camera and these hands break apart and then we kind of face this way. We could stay here and do a couple of these just to get used to it. Then we can turn, our hands come back together, we've come back to this middle plane and as we turn over to this other red wall, our other hands come apart. So we've got this nice transition area where we both touch this plane and then the next hand comes apart so that we're on two planes. So let's, let's make it go, everybody. Here we go. Pretty much the whole class is partner toy. And so I introduced the different stances you might find yourself in in partner point. What we worked on today, we did three things. We made use of front to front today, we made a use of cross stance, and we also made a use of back to front or front to back. Um, and then we picked up the boy. A snarl. A snarl. We did some two beat and three beat we facing each other. This is very analogous to uh, what you do by yourself. It's like I'm the left half of the body, he's the right half. So I need poise wins. This is an important point. Because we aren't actually part of the same body and therefore our brains aren't actually, you know, intrinsically telepathically linked, we have to communicate. Partner poise is all about communication and and deciding what roles you're going to play as you're learning, or else it can be really confusing. But we both agreed, okay, we're going to spin forward that way towards the camera, and we're trying to spin in split time, and Dan has decided he's going to be the one who initiates the move. So I'm just waiting, ready for Dan to initiate the move. Let's do two beat. Two beat. Yeah. One, two, two beat. I, in a way, I feel like that two beat is actually harder. To keep the timing. Yeah, three beat. It is harder to keep. 3 beat. 3 beat starts the same way. It uses one repetition of 2 beat. The initiator does one 2 beat underneath the arm to initiate the 3 beat. So I initiate 2 beat, then I initiate 3 beat. Over, under, back. So it's behind in shoulder, behind in shoulder, around. Two, three. What we didn't do last class was this awesome cross stance for me thingy. It's actually really easy. As soon as you start to get the hang for it, it just feels really natural. Like we've literally taught uh, people in 15 minutes how to do this who had never seen play before. And we've offset ourselves. It turns out we're holding our poi in, I'm holding in my right hand, he's got his in his right hand. But because we're standing across from each other, they link up. I'm going to spin my poi kind of on this plane in front of me, a little bit behind Dan, and he's doing the same with me. We've decided which direction we're spinning, so we're, our poi wheels are rolling that way towards the wall. So to him, it feels kind of like he's spinning forwards if he's looking at that wall, and to me, when I'm looking that way, it, looks, it feels like backwards. The easy way for Dan to initiate this is to do a flip up over the top, hook around my arm, like do -si do and bring my arm back there. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. Flips over, do -si do oh, my arm comes over there. So that was the first half of it. Now, my arm wants to come back to its wall, but it's not good enough just to go back by itself. I want to bring Dan's arm over there, too. So he goes, hey, John's arm, come over to my wall. I say, no, no, come back over to my wall. And if we keep repeating that, it's a super simple way to do this weave. So, let's do that. Come over to my wall. Ah, uh, no, you come back to my wall. No, baby, my hand is there. Uh, you obviously haven't seen my hot tub. <laughs> also notice that once we get this going, we have definitive roles as to who dozy -si goes over the shoulder and who dozy -si goes under. Dan, as the forward spinner, takes my arm in between us, down below the shoulders. And I, as the reverse spinner, take his arm, I come around and scoop his arm up and over. Notice how I'm not like right here, I'm actually 
I've given enough space so there's this tiny little kind of diagonal corridor between our toes so that as he scoops us through the middle, there's more space for that to happen. We're kind of working on three height levels. When we're doing the arms winding around each other thing, it's happening roughly at about shoulder level. But then there's the low, hit the golf ball transition, and the high, beep, ring the bell transition. Whack! Back weave is very much like a three beat weave front to front, but the person who switches around this way has a slightly more confusing job at first. And it's going to be the same movement and rhythm, just I gotta flip behind me now. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll initiate this one, either person can. So I'm going to initiate by going under, behind Dan, back, and then I go over Dan's shoulder, under it, back around. Over the shoulder, under the shoulder, back around. Folding. So if we're kind of handcuffed together because we're weaving here, I can fold out in the cross stance and use this to transition between different moves that we've been learning. The key is treat your poi like the poi blades of doom. And as Indiana Jones, you do need to do the smart thing and move when they're not in your in the place you want to step to. If I try to step now, ugh, I get hit. On the other hand, if I step when my ploy are getting out of my way, moving from this plane back behind Dan, I can now step there, and it turns into the cross stance weave. Same thing, if I want to step back in front of Dan to take the same position I was in, I shouldn't do it when the ploy are in front of Dan, I should do it when they're behind him. So if they go behind him, I step over here, we drop a beat, back into the three beat, went from a four beat to a three beat, so it was kind of quick. This other transition adds a beat from a three beat to a four beat, so it's a little more relaxed pace. Right. So folding behind, we can also do that. So instead of stepping when it's behind it, I want to step when it's behind me. So I get out of the way, I go, he comes over, and then I cross over. That was the kind of quick transition. I step when I flip over Dan's arm. So I step here, come around, and that's about that. All right.